Okay. We've got about five minutes. So um, as I get things queued up, you look ready. You look great. This looks great. Thanks. Um, cool. It's going to be awesome. I'll send you questions in the Zoom chat. We'll do it that way. I'm going to turn, um, I'm going to go on mute here and I'm going to go live on Facebook. Um, then okay. I will load all of your um I'll load your uh, post copy and your featured artist link in the description. So anyone at any time can access it. You can mention it. You can talk about how you're a featured artist with Blick. You're welcome to do that, obviously, because we'll be linking there. And then, um, yeah, we've got the spotlight on you. When you're ready to work, we'll switch. When you're all done, just for a minute, we'll switch back and you'll say bye. And then we'll close out the meeting and then you'll be all done. Yay. All right. Okay. Wish me luck. All right, good luck. You too. That'll All be right. fun. Okay. So, okay, cool. All right, so I'm going on mute. Hi everyone, I'm Liz Tran. 
Welcome to my Seattle studio. And I am so happy to be here and I'm happy to be sharing part of my process with you. So today I will be doing my ink blot tests, otherwise known as Rorschach tests. Um, and I'll be using a variety of materials. I'll be using acrylic ink. I'll be using alcohol ink. I'll be using Blix matte acrylics and Posca pens. So um, please ask any questions that you may have. I will try, I will do my best to answer all of them. And if you have questions about the materials that I'm using, you can see a full list of them on my artist page on Blick. So anyways, welcome and let's get started. So I like to start by folding my paper. This is Kitakata paper from Blick. And I've been actually working with this paper for probably over 20 years now, not to age myself, but. Um, so I start by folding it in half and I actually have, I think I have 10 or so sheets in this stack of paper. You can just use one sheet if you want. Um, I like to use multiple sheets because then I just, I will get like uh, some soak through with paint and then I will go on to just make a painting out of each layer as they soak through. So, and I'll remove the top one as it's done. So I'm folding my paper. And it's also nice to have multiple papers too, just as a buffer, um, because the paper can get a little bit delicate as it gets wet. Um, so I'm gonna start out by moistening the paper. I'm gonna just use a spray bottle for this, but you can also use a brush. Um, there's kind of a happy medium between too much saturation and not enough, but you can always add more water if you need it. Just be a little hesitant with oversaturating. Um, so we just have to shake these first. This is the pearlescent FW paints. Ooh. I love pearlescent. This is, um, Sun up blue. Come here. Here. And what I like about this process is seeing all the how all of the different materials will work together. So we're using so many. And actually, this is a really pared down version of how I typically work, which is kind of hard to believe especially when you go to my materials list on my artist page. Um, I use a lot of stuff, a lot, a lot. But I do like paring it down for a slightly um, simplified and quicker version. Oh, and this one, I got a little excited when I was opening this package and I, I cut the top off. So don't, don't do that. Um, this one is sky blue. And since I kind of ruined the dipper. So I paint a lot of different ways I use brushes, I use droppers, I use my fingers sometimes. I enjoy the act of mark making and seeing how I can produce different marks. And I'm gonna start going in with some of this matte acrylic. This is blue-green. 
you gotta shake these too. There's something about the quality of the Kitakata paper. I've always loved just the tone and the texture of it. And there is a correct, I, I believe there's a correct side to work on and an incorrect side to work on. Um, it looks like I'm probably on the correct side, <laughs> but for what I'm doing, I, it doesn't really matter all that much. Um, if I was using it for printmaking or something like that, it would, it would matter more. So it's kind of goopy. So let's fold this over. Ah, of course, the first question is about color. So my work used to be a little less colorful and it's grown more and more colorful over the past decade or so. Um, and I use color as a tool to elevate my mood. Um, bright colors really have resonated with me lately. And I live in Seattle too, where it's really just kind of dark and dreary most of the time. Um, so I'm fighting back against that, against that dreariness. Um, I've started actually delving into like the psychology of color lately, which is really fascinating. And I'd like to learn even more about that. And it's also pretty subjective too. Um, anyways, I just, I, I love color and I wanna use every single color that I can possibly get my hands on. In fact, paint almost isn't even enough for me now. I wanna start working with light, um, with colored lights, neon. So I definitely see that in the future. Um, yeah, that's a great question. A little more of this. And these are the Blick acrylic artist paint. So I'm using, you'll notice I'm using acrylics of different viscosities. And that's because I like, once again, a variety of how they turn up. And you should probably be wearing gloves while doing this. Um, clearly I'm not. I love painting with my fingers. I think I'm still secretly like six years old or something. You have so much control painting with your fingers, more so than even a brush it feels like to me sometimes. But clearly my work is not overly precise either. So I leave a lot of room for, for the materials to just kind of do what they, they want. And I am doing some decision-making, but the materials are doing some of it as well. So this is the Blick Acrylic Medium Magenta. A little bit of orange. Orange is a color I struggle with sometimes. I've started using it a bit more. I like to challenge myself to work with colors that I actually, that are not terribly appealing to me. Sometimes I'll end up liking them. 
You can tell how I wipe my fingers off. <laughs> I basically am a toddler. So. Let's do this again. And there's really no right a wrong way to do this. This process reminds me a little bit of printmaking too, just, you know, you don't really know exactly how it's gonna turn out until you open it back up. So there's a little bit of like chance and surprise. So I'm gonna moisten my paper a little bit more. I feel like I don't have quite enough bleed going on yet. And I love, this is the, um, the pearlescent, the pearlescent uh, acrylic ink. And I love the way that it's turning out and the texture that it has right now. So I'm gonna come in with some alcohol inks as well. And I do these in a little bit of a different way than I do when I apply the other paints. I'm gonna fold this in half. And saturate it a bit more. And each paper will probably require a different level of saturation. Um, like I said, with the Kitakata, I don't want to oversaturate. I'm careful not to oversaturate. So, and because these alcohol inks tend to bleed through. Get a little bit more water there. That's just water. Um, I'm going to use them while the paper is folded. Uh, this is, this is Kitakata. It is I believe it's on my artist page. If it's not on there, uh, they should be able to provide, Blick should be able to provide you guys with a link, a direct link to it. And I think it's a Japanese paper. I used it a lot in printmaking for Shin Kole. Is it works really well for Shin Kole for those of you who are, you know, in, into printmaking. So I love the way these alcohol inks bleed. I know this isn't necessarily the traditional way of using them. Um, and some of the colors get a little bit of a halo effect to them, which if they do that this time, I will point it out. But it's pretty cool. So I've also done this with watercolor paper. I've done this with um, Blix pre-primed canvas pad, actually. And there's a video on YouTube where I'm doing it with that. And that worked really well too. You'll just get a completely different effect depending on whatever materials you end up using. This eggplant, one of my most favoriteest alcohol ink colors. So where is everybody from? I'm I'm over here in the northwest corner of the United States. Where are you guys tuning in from? Columbus, Ohio. 
Arlington Heights, Illinois. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of give this an extra mush. See how the alcohol inks took on the other side. Be fun to make a whole book of these. And one of the reasons I really like doing this body of work um, is because everybody can bring their own interpretation to it. I mean, I realize all art is subjective and we do that anyways, but I feel like it, it extends an invitation to the audience to interpret it how they want and have you know permission to interpret it how they want to. Um, I, I vaguely remember taking Rorschach tests back when I was a little kid. Um, my parents had actually enrolled me in some, some interesting psychological studies when I was a kid. And I think it was part of that. And so I just always had that at the back of my mind. And I did make these some as a kid too. And, you know, normally they're just black and white. It's just black ink, um, but that is not satisfying to me at all. Um, I'd like to add the complexity of the color into it. So let's see, what do we need next? I'm gonna go for this acrylic ink. And this is, let's see. Iridescent green, shimmering green. Um, oh, wow, you guys are all over the place. Um, so cool to see where everybody is tuning in from. Uh, do the pages stick and tear sometimes? That's a very good question, too. I've had that happen before. One thing you want to be careful of is you don't want to let the paint dry while it's still in like the pile of paint. So as you can see, you know, it goes, it goes all the way through sometimes. So I actually have a laundry dryer, like one of those laundry drying racks that I use. So as I go through each layer, I'll hang them on that. Um, But yes, I've had them stick and tear. Uh, a lot of my final pieces are actually mount, are paper mounted to panel. So even if it does stick and tear, I'll often just piece them back together on the panel and you would never really know. Um, I also like showing accidents sometimes. Is it like a parchment paper? Uh, not quite, but you could probably use par parchment paper. You know, anything that will take, that will take water-based material like acrylic ink. I mean, I guess you could, could do it with oil-based paints too. Um, always good to experiment with different kinds of papers. You could use cloth. I mean, really, the possibilities are kind of endless. Again. Sometimes I do also, instead of using the laundry drying rack, I'll use, I'll just lay um, sheets of plastic down on my studio floor and it tends to not stick to the plastic as it dries so if you don't want if you don't want it to be up at an angle and you want it to dry flat I would definitely put some plastic down first just because you'll have so many things saturating through um, this is titanium white Okay.
I figure like opening paint jars is sometimes counts as physical exercise, I think. I mean, and you could get crazy with it and just put on globs and globs of paint and that does really cool stuff too. But I'm being a little conservative with it right now. Conservative for me anyways. Light pink. Like I said earlier, you may want to use gloves. I feel like I should have some like dramatic music accompanying this process, especially for the reveal when every time you open the paper up and see the image. Something dramatic. So you can see that it's making a nice ghost. That's what I call it, ghost. And that's kind of back from print, my printmaking times. Um, but that refers to the paint um, that has seeped through. The ghost would be, if, if printmaking would be if you, you know, ran it through the press a second time without re-inking. So this is, let's pretend there's dramatic music right now. Okay. Get a little more wet. And oftentimes this will, the um, paint and inks will continue to bleed even after your finished, you know, as long as the paper is still wet. So sometimes I'll just leave, you know, a piece to dry and then go home and come back to the studio the next day and it looks completely different, which can be good or bad. Uh, my journey being a professional artist, that's a long one. Um, so I've always made art ever since I was a kid and I kind of just never stopped. I, I've always done it. Um, I did work briefly as a boat builder, which to me is kind of an art form as well, but that was a family business. So I used to build wooden, wooden drift boats, like fly fishing boats, but I, it was actually really convenient because I had plenty of wood panels, free wood panels to paint on. So I would paint on those. Um, and then let's see, I decided I wanted to go to art school. I couldn't afford it. So I enrolled in community college for a few years, which was actually great. Lane Community College in Eugene, Oregon. Shout out to them. Um, had some really fabulous teachers there and was able to transfer two years into Cornish College of the Arch Arts in Seattle. Um, and pretty much since, you know, 2002, when I graduated, I've been doing this professional art thing. Um, and this, my career has just kind of grown naturally. Um, can you use salt like in watercolor? That's a great question. Um, I don't know, you should try it. I don't know how well it would work with the Kitakata paper, but that would be a great experiment to try. 
I've also used it on um, on silk before. The sorry, the question was if if you can use salt like watercolor. Um, try it, try it. I bet you could get some really gorgeous effects. Um, it. My guess is that it would probably work the best with the acrylic inks, but I could be wrong. So I get some more iridescence going on in this one. I like the depth that the iridescence provides. And let's see some fluorescent green. Big fan of fluorescent colors. Used to hate them. Use them all the time now. Yes, uh, somebody just asked about if you can use the Sumi paper. Um, and yeah, I have actually done it with that. And I, I use a lot of calligraphy paper in my work too. Uh, Chinese calligraphy paper usually. Uh, it's, you could definitely do it with this. One thing I would say though, is to be a little mindful of, of, of the thickness of it and you want to gravitate towards something that's a little more sturdy. Like this kitakata is fairly sturdy. So. I know a lot of calligraphy paper can be um, pretty fragile when it's saturated with water. So um, I did get the Blick, I think there's a Blick 10 piece rice paper, or is it a Japanese paper set? Um, where they have a nice variety. I think it's on my artist page too. They have a nice variety of different, um, different calligraphy paper, um, Japanese papers. So it could be fun to get that and like try all the different kinds. Big fan of experimentation. There really is no right or wrong in art. Although you may have been taught that. There really isn't. And there's no one way to be an artist either. Everyone's path is different. Pretty sure this needs more pink. Sometimes the papers want to fold incorrectly. So you have to be kind of careful about that or else you won't get the mirrored image.
Let's see. So I feel like at this point, I have a really good base to work from. So I'm gonna start adding some smaller details. Then I will hit it with a, a heat gun. And then I'll start working on it with my pens. So this is the gold, oh, sorry, it's gilded. That's even better, gilded um, alloy ranger. And let's see, I don't want to add anything else. I love, I love this color, the flamingo, flamingo ranger alcohol ink. Okay. I need some deeper colors in this. This is indigo. Yeah, it could be fun to try this with watercolors. I don't, maybe it's a little more difficult to control because we get muddy easier, but I'm sure it can be done. Volcano Red, love that name. Let's see, whatever. And waterfall Green. And I've been using these materials for a really, really long time. So I just got a question, what types of paints have you used so far? So, so far, I'm assuming you mean so far today. So I've used Blick acrylic matte, which is kind of, it's the viscosity is a little, a little looser than just regular acrylic, acrylic paint. Um, I've used acrylic inks by FW. I have used 
um, Alcohol Inks by Ranger. And I have used Blick Artist Acrylic and Water. So if you would like a complete list of the materials that I use, they're on my Blick Artist page. So, so I'm really happy with how this looks right now. So I'm going to hit it with a heat gun and then come back in and add some fine details to it. So, and because I don't want it to stick to the layer that's underneath, I'm just gonna dry it on this table here and hope that it does not stick to my table. I don't think it will. I apologize in advance for the noise of the heat gun. Um, you can also use a blow dryer if you're in a hurry. I wouldn't normally, I, I don't use a heat gun all that often. Um, usually I just let it dry on its own, but for time's sake, we are going to use this and always make sure to keep it six inches or further away um, from the surface you're using. And I'm just going to blot it too to get a little more of the thicker paint up so I can dry this quickly. So this is all the paper that's soaked through too. Oops, did I lose my phone? So after I do this one, I'll probably just continue on, you know, making more off screen. So.
Oh, I love hearing what you're, what everyone's seeing in this. Yes, it totally looks like a butterfly. And okay, I'm gonna look for the yellow pig with black eyes. I think I kind of see it. Um, I'm working on that one. But I did, I have to admit, I did kind of intentionally try to make it look a little butterfly-ish. So, okay, now that it's pretty much dry, I'm gonna come back, except for that, <laughs> I'm gonna come back with my pens and do some finer details in it. Um, I just wanna make sure that the areas that I'm using my pens on are completely dry, otherwise it will, well, it will probably destroy the pens. Um, so, let's see. And these pens I use with pr pretty much everything that I do. I use these paint pens, Posca, Mini Posca. Um, actually, I have another one that's already going in this color. Um, always good to shake them first. Also be mindful if you bring them on flights, which I travel a lot with my materials, just be aware that they will have a tendency to build up pressure. So you may get a little more paint than you are intending. Um, but one thing that I like about working with these, like I can just basically bring them everywhere when I travel, it's really just easy to pack them up. Um, and also TSA doesn't bug me as much about pens as they do paints. So I do a lot of residencies and stuff overseas. So I'm always thinking about how to get my art materials to different locations and whatnot without them being confiscated. A pink turtle, a dancer with colorful sleeves. I love the, I love these. Yeah, I, I end up seeing a lot of eyeballs um, in these too. Like a lot of faces. Sometimes they look like people I know. Maybe more the aura of people that I know. So these pens come in different, different sizes. So here's three different sizes. Um, smallest, medium, large. Uh, I work with all of those sizes quite frequently. Um, they come in great colors too, which is important. So you also see I work with a lot of circles. Um, and circles represent a lot of different things for me, but it's also a shape that just comes out intuitively. It's a very feminine shape. It feels that way to me anyways. It's always nice to put finer details in. I had an instructor once um, who actually called the finer details jewelry. And I use that sometimes, that term. I'm not a big fan of precision, as you can probably tell. Just kind of eyeballing it. But you could get ultra precise with this if you wanted to. And you'll notice the paper does tend to wrinkle throughout this process. And I usually mount mine to panel afterwards, which would be a whole other video. 
but if you wanted to, if you wanted to use it, um, you know, and frame your piece with this paper, you can always re-wet the paper after it's dry and then weight it like under a bunch of books and stuff and um, get it to flatten out again. But each paper behaves differently. So this is the metallic violet. So these kind of metallics as well. I've been using a lot of purple lately in my work and actually I've been dyeing my hair purple lately and buying a lot of purple clothes. This last year, it's just, I want everything to be purple and I'm not exactly sure why. I mean, it's a beautiful color. It's like, it's the color of royalty. It's, it has a lot of significance. I always associate it with wizards too. <laughs> One. I love the the tip on these, the they call them bullet tip. I'm pretty hard on my art materials. That one. These pens hold up pretty well, which is kind of saying a lot. And if you're using these pens on the on this type of paper, the Kitakata paper, I definitely recommend being a little gentle with them because it can pick up the fibers of the paper. So it's almost better to just use them as a stamp kind of than like taking a you know a pen and just dragging a line across because you'll pick up you'll see some of the fibers stuck to my and already, and you can clean it off, but it can turn into a bit of a mess um, pretty easily. So it's a push and pull. Everything is a push and pull.
Is anybody getting any other images from this? The last one was a pink turtle. How do I frame my work? Well, I can tell you that I really don't like framing. I don't do it myself. Um, works on paper, I'll have someone frame them, usually really simply with a lot of white space around them. Um, but my work on panel, like I'll probably mount this to wood panel and that doesn't need a frame. And I believe the Blick would panels are on my artist page as well through Blick. Um, and I usually sand the edges of those panels when I'm done and then varnish them. So they're very, they have a very finished quality to them. And that's typically how I show my work. I used to frame my own work and um, I'm just a better person if I'm not framing my own work. So, yeah. Do one last glob here of pale gold in the matte acrylic. Let's kind of do a lot of it. And I'm also going to add some of this acrylic glitter glaze, which you can use as a medium or an overcoat. And I really like glitter. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but um, big fan of glitter. And it dries clear. It's opaque when it comes out and you can't really see the glitter, but it'll dry clear. Um, yeah, I try to keep both sides um, mirrored with the pen work as well. Sometimes I'm just, sometimes I screw it up, but you know, mistakes are good, I think. Okay. So now I've got like these globs of glitter and gold. Oh, glitter and gold. And Make sure my papers are all lined up. A blowfish, someone sees a blowfish, I love that. Um, and I'm gonna fold these again. It's probably gonna be the final one. So some of it's, I can tell that the paper is just kind of at its limit right now because it's doing some strange things. Not strange, it's doing paper things. Um, so that's definitely gonna be the final time that I open it, um, fold it and open it because it's, it wants to give out on me sadly. Um, so if the paper starts doing that, I'll usually just let it dry completely and then just come back, you know, the next day and then go back into it. Oh, I also love drips in my work. And any of you guys who are familiar with, um, with my work, you'll see that there are quite a few drips. So sometimes I'll do that with these too. And the, the drips won't always necessarily mirror each other perfectly. Watch, now it's not gonna drip, now that I want it to. 
Um, let's see, we can do it with this. They don't have to mirror each other perfectly. I feel like we already have enough of that going on. So. And the drips to me feel like, they feel like roots into the ground and it feels very balancing to me, which honestly, like this whole series I've been working on over the past, past year, which has been a tough year as I'm sure you know, as it has been for everyone. And I find this process to be just very grounding um, and balancing. So, okay. It's not looking amazing, amazing. It's not finished, but I really like where I am right now and it would need to dry fully and we're running out of time. So um, once this dries up, this is the glitter stuff. It will be much, there'll be a much more glitter visible. Um, but it looks like it's about time to go. So I'm going to say my goodbyes. I really, I hope you have enjoyed this process. Um, it's really been a pleasure to share it with you. And oh, my IG handle is Liz Trans Studios, L-I-Z, T-R-A-N-S-T-U-D-I-O-S. -S. Um, I'm also on TikTok. I tried to be on Twitter, uh, not on there very often. Uh, but yeah, Liz Trans Studios Instagram is where I mostly uh, post updates. And my website is www.liztran.com. So please pay it a visit. I have exhibitions coming up in Seattle and elsewhere. Um, so just stay tuned. So thank you for joining me and peace out.